Hello, I'm Chris Busby. I'm speaking to you from the uh, offices we have in the Latvian Academy of Sciences in Riga. And I want to talk to you about the, the uh, nuclear test veterans case, which was heard in London um, about two weeks ago. This is the Test Veteran Pension Appeal Tribunal. Now, in, a, in an earlier video which I made from Sweden, I mentioned that uh, the evidence that I'd managed to get from under Freedom of Information Act in England had made it quite clear that the test veteran tribunals, the pensions appeal tribunals, could be won, and also the substantive case of the test veterans against the Ministry of Defence could also be won, because all of the evidence that the Ministry of Defence was putting forward in defence of their own case that the veterans had not received any significant radiation um, exposures, all of that evidence can be easily shown to be wrong. And the way in which it's wrong is that none of the measurements that were made by the, the Ministry of Defence and the people who were operating uh, on, the test, that, on the test sites at the time of the, of the nuclear test, no, none of those people measured the internal radionuclide exposures, exposures to uranium or plutonium, the, those two alpha emitters, and also other internal radio, radionuclide emitters, because none of the instruments that they had at the time could adequately uh, measure these, these radionuclides. But of course there were samples taken. And what amazed me in the whole business was that we never actually ever saw any of the measurements that were made of these samples. We didn't see how much uranium there was on the ground, we didn't see how much plutonium there was on the ground. So I made various um, applications under the Freedom of Information Act and they were stalled and stalled and stalled and stalled. And each time I made an application, they just sent me documents that were irrelevant and so on. And eventually the judge in the tribunal, in the Pension Appeals Tribunal case, he ordered the court, he, he ordered the, uh, the Ministry of Defence to release the evidence. And some of this evidence was released under the Official Secrets Act. And I was asked if I would um, sign the Official Secrets Act, but I refused to do that. But nevertheless, Enough of this information came out from the Freedom of Information request as a result of the pressure brought to bear on the government, the British government, by the judge, um, Hugh Stubbs, for me to be able to analyse it and see what was really going on there. And so by the end of 2011, I had such a powerful case that it was quite clear that these veterans' appeals I, uh, could, could be defeated. And in fact, I defeated the, the Ministry of Defence in several pensions appeals where individual cases were taken. So, for instance, in, 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 in one case I would go into court and I would argue that there was a lot of uranium and plutonium and so on on the ground, and the case would be won. In fact, I did five of these cases and they were all won. And the sixth case I was coming up to was a case of a lady called Dawn Pritchard, and I think at that time the Ministry of Defence had enough. And I think I remember making a, a video which I put on, on YouTube in which I said I thought they were going to settle, but actually they didn't settle. They didn't settle, so I was wrong. What they did instead was that they took all of the cases, all of the test veteran cases uh, that had the pensions appeals, this is to say people were applying for pensions, and the pensions were refused on the basis that these, these veterans had never really been exposed to radiation at all. Uh, and so they were appealing against this decision. And, each, and, and as I said, in the individual cases when I went in, we won each one of these cases one after another. So the Ministry of Defence knew that I was going to basically win all of them because I had all the evidence. And at that point, they decided that they weren't going to play that game anymore. So they took all of the veterans that were left, 16 of them, uh, and, I, and by that time I had been uh, engaged by all of the 16 of them to act as their expert witness. So I was the expert witness on all 16 of those cases. Um, and they put them all into one huge case. So they said, we're going to hear all of this together in London. This was a couple of years ago that they said they were going to do this. It was quite astonishing because all of these veterans are from different places. I mean, some are from Australia, some are from uh, Christmas Island. They're, they're, they had different cancers, they had different diseases. To put them all into one case is, is really rather silly. And at the same time, 
the, the government tried to get me kicked out as an expert witness. So they said, this, this man, Busby, is not an expert. You know, he has to prove that he is an expert before we'll allow him to come into court. Anyway, I did prove I was an expert. The judge allowed me in. I got various letters written by various people in America who I work for as an expert in courts in the United States. So that particular um, uh, method of keeping me out that was, that was done by the government, that, that didn't work. So something had to be done. Something had to be done. The government had to ensure that I was not allowed to give evidence, or of course they would lose the case again. Because by the time, by the end of 2011, the cases were in the bag for reasons which I will briefly outline. And the reason I'm here at the moment to talk to you about this is because something terrible has happened, something really criminal in my opinion has happened. And I'll explain. At the end of 2011, the solicitors who were acting for the test veterans, uh, and the test veterans at that time were being, um, being helped by the Royal British Legion. And the solicitors who were uh, uh, being asked to help by the Royal British Legion were Rosenblatt's. Now I had already worked for Rosenblatt's for two or three years on the substantive case of the test veterans. This is the case of the 900 test veterans who were taking the case for damages against the Ministry of Defence in the High Court. But suddenly, at the end of 2011, Rosenblatt's pulled out. They just pulled out, just like that. Oof, they stopped. They were not going to act for the veterans anymore. There was no good reason given for this. And the reason I thought was that something had happened with regard to my various reports to the court that each time showed that the Ministry of Defence were lying. Each time that the Ministry of Defence came back with some argument, I could shoot it down. And I could shoot it down because of all this evidence that had come out under Freedom of Information Act. Top secret evidence, redacted evidence, evidence that showed how much plutonium and uranium was in the bombs because they had aircraft flying through the, the cloud at Christmas Island, Canberra aircraft. These young men were flying these, these, air, these aircraft to scoop up radioactive waste from the, from the enormous, enormous uh, mushroom cloud that was there. And the concentrations of radionuclides in the scoops were, were, being give, were given in, in this evidence that was released under the Freedom of Information Act. So there was a lot of information there, and a lot of other information that showed that in fact this fallout from the clouds was falling on Christmas Island, if we're looking at the Christmas Island situation, and contaminating the, the veterans who were on the ground there, something which the Ministry of Defence said was impossible. So Rosenblatt suddenly pulled out, and there was a big gap, and everybody was freaking out. What on earth is going on? The Royal British Legion contacted me and they said, oh, well, you still act as an expert for us. We, you know, we, we don't know what to do now. We need, we need to know if you'll still act as an expert. So I said, okay, okay, I'll act as an expert. And then the next I heard was about a month after this was a new firm of solicitors came in called Hogan Lovells International Limited. Quite out of the blue, Hogan Lovells decided that they were going to act for the veterans. But they didn't contact me, I just heard this from the Royal British Legion. And then the whole year passed, the whole year passed, I hardly heard anything. I had a couple of brief letters from Hogan Lovers passing on some uh, information from the court, asking me to respond to various Ministry of Defence arguments, which I did do. And then what happened was that three weeks before the tribunal case was due to be heard, Three weeks before the tribunal case was due to be heard, I had a letter from Hogan Lovell saying, we're not going to use you as an expert witness. So all of the three years' work that I did, all of that evidence that I got out under the Freedom of Information Act, all of those reports that I wrote for this case, which would have won the case, and, and which did win the case for the other litigants that I, I, I represented individually, all of that evidence was being kept out of the court. All of it. All of it. Isn't that extraordinary? Anyway, so what I did was I, I thought, well, I'm not going to take this stand, you know, lying down, because this is, this is a very, very major item. I mean, the, the test veterans themselves are being betrayed by this. Because the, the, the witnesses, the expert witnesses that Hogan Lovells were intending to use, 
I knew these witnesses, and I mean, one of them had worked for the nuclear industry, I had I'd seen the reports from the other ones. None of those reports had brought in the evidence that I was due to give in court. And the most important evidence that I was due to give in court, evidence which had won the other cases, was evidence about the... Um, was about, about the International Commission on Radiological Protection, about the risk model, the radiation risk model, which increasingly has been shown to be completely wildly wrong with regard to exposure to, to uranium and plutonium and these internal radionuclides that we're talking about. So all of that evidence is going to be kept out, but even more serious was evidence that had come out under the Freedom of Information Act, which described the fallout over Christmas Island, because a lot of these veterans were veterans of the Christmas Island tests. Christmas Island in the Pacific is where the British nuclear megaton tests were carried out, where they dropped the, the hydrogen bombs that they had developed. And I'll talk to you about, the, about one of these bombs, which was called Grapple Y. And Grapple Y was a, was, a, was a big mistake. Grapple Y caused an enormous amount of fallout to land on the island. And we know this from this information that came out under the Freedom of Information Act. But anyway, the point is none of this stuff is going to be in the court. And uh, therefore, probably, a lot of those veterans will not get justice, in my opinion. Because the evidence is not there to show that they were exposed. And so the, 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 the Ministry of Defence will argue that their radiation film badges didn't show a big enough dose, and therefore whatever cancer or, 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 or condition that they're um, appealing about uh, was not caused by radiation. So let, let's just now look at the, briefly at the, uh, at the evidence that is being kept out of the court. And uh, because, because of what's happened, I'm going to put all of this evidence on the internet, so you will find all of this evidence at the Green Audit website, www.greenaudit.org, or you will find it on various other websites that I will show in this video that I'm making now. So you'll be able to go there and get all of the evidence that I have produced for the nuclear test veterans. So at least then it's in the, in, it's in the public domain. This is normally evidence that of course would be, would be heard only by the court, and a lot of this evidence is semi-secret evidence that came out with great difficulty. The first thing that, that you need to know is that the evidence from one of the reports that I got from the, uh, from the case, from the Freedom of Information request, was um, a paper by a man called Oldbury, A.E. Oldbury, who worked for the Atomic Weapons Establishment in Aldermaston. And in 1963-64, he visited Christmas Island and made various measurements on the runway of the airport, of the airfield at Christmas Island. And, and usefully for me, these measurements contained, uh, concentrate, they contained gamma radiation measurements and beta radiation measurements at the same position. So one could work out the beta-gamma ratio. Now this may sound very complicated and arcane, but actually from the beta-gamma ratio you can tell what the radionuclides are on the ground. And from the particular measurements made by Oldbury, it was possible to show that there was, even in 1963, after they'd done all the clean-ups, there was an enormous amount of uranium on the ground. Uranium. Now the point about uranium is that we know from the other work that we've done in Iraq, in Fallujah, and in the Balkans, that uranium particles produced in an explosion and inhaled cause massive, massive genotoxic damage. In Iraq, we found huge increases in leukemia, we found enormous death rates in children, we found a lot of congenital anomalies. So we know that uranium is bad stuff. And the main fallout component on Christmas Island, and this will not go into the court, nobody will talk about uranium. The main component of the fallout which caused the problems in the test veterans and in their children is uranium. And we find a lot of uranium in this old brew report, Christmas Island report, and that was a report which I used in the other test veteran cases which I won, the five 